So today's topic is all about how to turn your inner critic into an ally during times of transition and change. So if you are someone in the, at, at the moment going through transition and change, I would love to know uh, what is going on in your head, what's going on uh, in terms of how you are going through transition and change, and what are you most excited to learn about um, in terms of turning that critic into an ally. Um, Again, let me know where you're from. Uh, let me know that you're joining me, which would be great. I always love knowing that I'm not alone in this live streams. Um, so for all of you that are joining me for the first time, you're coming into this page for the first time. And if you don't know who I am, uh, my name is Lydia Lee. I'm the founder and corporate escape coach at Screw the Cubicle. Uh, and one of my biggest missions in my business is not only to help people start businesses that creates uh, more freedom in their lives, but also to help them to identify and create meaningful work uh, that really comes into play with you know, making sure that that, that new business career is sustainable, uh, it's meaningful, and when something feels meaningful and it's more than just about making money, um, you are going to be a lot more creative and a lot more invested into your career rather than the clocking in and clocking out. Because by the way, it's very easy to turn a business into just another job if you're not careful and that's not why you're quitting your job, right? That's not why you're interested uh, to do something different with your life. So the two big topics I want to live stream on today is about the inner critic, how to turn that nasty voice into an ally during your times of transition and change. And then the second thing, which I'll talk a little bit more about during uh, towards the end of the live stream. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, and if you want to learn more about um, the uh, retreat I'm going to be running in November, it's called Your Next Big Thing Retreat. So the early bird, a lot of you guys have emailed me asking about the next intake for the retreat. It is my last retreat of the year. So if you guys have ever been ever been interested to come to Bali and actually incubate with me and 10 other beautiful souls for seven days to create a business you can love, uh, please check out the link that I've just put up there on the screen. Uh, hi, Carolyn. <laughs> nice to see you here. Um, and we have a few more spots left for the, the November uh, retreat spot. And the early bird uh, also uh, ends on September 30th. So if you're interested, grab a call with me in the link uh, that I'm showing on the screen right now. We'll have a chat about whether the retreat is a good move for you uh, and if you're ready uh, for a retreat like that. So if you're looking to start 2018, I can't believe we're in that year already very soon. Uh, we want to get you on the right foot to really start that new year with um, excellent motivation towards your career and really understanding your steps uh, to really uh, escape your cubicle, but make practical plans of how you're going to be able to do that. Okay, so I'll talk more about that um, towards the last part of this retreat. But let's get into what you came here for today, which is to learn how to turn your inner critic into an ally uh, during your times of transition and change. So our critic is, or our inner critic, we could have multiple critics actually in our heads. Um, it is the noisiest one we're about to make big changes in our lives. Don't you notice that? It's like when you're just sort of doing your day to day, you know, there is sort of calm and collected. But once you start to sort of change something in your life, uh, emotionally, uh, decisions that you're making, whatever it is that you're that's causing big changes in your life, all of a sudden, it's like noisy town, right? Like all those critics are coming out from the woodworks and trying to tell you a lot of things that are, are, are that you're not supposed to be doing, because <laughs> they're not used to it. Uh, so some big changes you might be experiencing today, uh, maybe a career transition. Maybe you're not happy with where your career is going. Uh, you've climbed the corporate ladder, but the view isn't what you're expecting and you want to make some big changes in your career. And that's scary. And that's also the time that your inner critic will be most persistent and noisiest. Perhaps you're also thinking about um, a lifestyle change, right? You're thinking about actually working less, spending more time with your children, uh, being able to possibly move abroad, like a lot of people come to me about that. Uh, and that is scary because I've never again done that before and your inner critic could be noisiest around this time as well during a lifestyle change. And basically anything that really disrupts your usual pattern and your behavior um, is when the critic is most noisiest. So your critic uh, may be saying things like, well, you're not good enough to do that, or you're way too old to do that, or you're way too young to do that big thing you want to do. So if you're joining me here live, and even after if you're watching the recording, I would love for you uh, to tell me what your inner critic is saying these days. So comment below this video and let me know, uh, what does your inner critic say to you? Like verbatim, what are the sort of repeated messages uh, and nasty conversations it's starting with you? I would love to know what that is. So type below and let me know. So 
a lot of the times when we're working with our inner critic, because guess what? It exists in all of us. It exists within all of us. Um, and a lot of the times we sort of hate having our inner critic around because deep down there may be some truth to its sort of yammering, right? And there may be a belief that still exists within yourself, even when you want to do something big, um, that does somewhat agree with this nasty critic and what it's saying. Um, and that's sort of the first thing that sort of makes people feel bad. It's like, well, I kind of agree with it, so it must be true, right? Um, but that's not where the conversation should end, right? And that's what we're going to be talking about today. We want to be using these conversations with our inner critic, inner parts of ourselves that do doubt the process, that do sometimes say you are not good enough, and we want to understand why that's going on. And really, the best way to change this belief, what we're trying to hope for after this communication with our inner critic is that we have to really be able to um, do something different to be able to feel or experience something different. So if you're looking to do something different with your life, you're looking to make big changes in your career, your lifestyle choices, you've got to do things that are different to, in order to get different results. I mean, that's logical, right? We can't keep doing all the things we used to do because that's where, you know, whatever it got us is what we, it got us. And now we're, we're trying to do something beyond that. So we have to be able to behave differently and be able to do things differently without the inner critic sort of coming in to ruin the party for us. And really the first um, thing that we need to be thinking about in terms of fighting that fear um, is this. Action is the antidote to fear. And yes, that is a fucking tweetable. <laughs> Um, this is really the thing that has helped me and many of uh, the clients that I've worked with in the past, you know, that are fearful. No one's ever courageous during um, big changes in their lives. But action really is the antidote to fear. So we can, uh, you know, repeat all the mantras that we think will help us be courageous. And we can read all the books that we think will inspire us to be courageous. But action is what it takes to really eliminate that fear, ease down that fear, and cause new evidence to be in your reality, so that that fear has no uh, no more context, you know, to be to no longer be able to tell you that uh, you should be fearful of that thing because you've done something to really honor um, what it is that you're striving towards, right? And so, action is the antidote to fear because our beliefs change when we act to make things real. And we then get to witness that we didn't die after doing it because it's a lot of times this illogical process that, oh, my God, I can't bear to be that way or it'll, it'll be the death of me. You know, if this thing ever happened to me. <coughs> um, and, you know, when when you're able to make things w real and get to witness that you didn't die after doing it, um, you will start to notice that potentially sometimes your worst case scenario did not come true. Right. So small little pieces of action, not the full action, because it takes us a while to get to completion of our success. But really, it is the small incremental actions uh, that really helps us to get braver in our lives and also to be quieting down the inner voice or inner critic voice that are coming through. And usually, even if your worst case scenario did come true, other than death, and in that case, you won't care, <laughs> but very likely what you're about to do will not, um, you know, lead to death. Um, but it sometimes sort of have the fight and flight mode that it seems like it's like death, you know, because we just don't know the difference between different types of fear sometimes. Um, and when, and, and even if our worst case scenario did come true sometimes, which is like, oh, I lost my job, or my spouse didn't agree with me with my lifestyle choices, or I failed into uh, creating uh, the first step of my business, it may, even if that all happens, it may not actually feel as bad as you anticipated it. And a really good example of this is what I experienced uh, the first time I ran out of money uh, in my business. I remember saving up about $5,000 just as a sort of savings plan while I you know, consulted and I worked on my business in, in between jobs uh, when I quit my job. Um, you know, one of the things that happened to me, which was my worst case scenario was that I had a flood in my apartment, right? I had, uh, I, I didn't remember to renew my house insurance uh, and a flood happened uh, and I had to pay $10,000 out of my own pocket to fix the public hallway, my neighbor's suite, my suite and my tenants, uh, giving them a bit of uh, money to, in order to move them out of the house. Um, and that took up my entire savings and more. I had to go into my line of credit to, to come up with the next five thousand dollars to uh, to make it ten thousand. And that was really my worst scenario, worst nightmare come true. But when that moment happened to me, I remember it very, very clearly. This was about four and a half years ago. 
um, I had to make a decision. It was either to go back and get a job and sort of be an adult again, uh, or I can use this as an opportunity uh, to figure out how resilient I can be and how I can hustle to make that money that I really need. So I'm happy to say, obviously, now that I'm talking to you from here, uh, is that I didn't opt for the easy route of trying to get a job and, you know, try to sort of go back into um, regular life, right? Instead, I really went, well, this is a bitch and it sucks. But at the same time, you know, I, what can, what can I do right now that is actually going to be able to allow me to control my outcomes rather than uh, sort of submit to the will of this fear, right? And at the end of the day, um, there were people around me that I could ask for help. I could learn to uh, make a living in other ways that maybe I would, wouldn't want to do permanently, but I could, you know, just to make ends meet for now. And I definitely did that. I did a lot of sort of consulting work and uh, even like project management work that was sort of not the scope of stuff I wanted to do, but it's what sort of paid the bills for me at that time and get me out of the hole of being sort of minus $5,000 in my line of credit to be able to pay for that horrible mistake I had, you know, with the house insurance. And knowing that I did that and being able to go through that really helped me that another time that this happened, you know, where I had some hard times financially down the road, I sort of knew what to do, you know, the second time around. And that, that those moments always happen, you know. Um, but that resilience that you built through going through some of those fearful things that can happen to you can absolutely help you build your character, it helps you to see actually the bravery that exists within you that won't even be activated unless you're in the vicinity of that fear, you know? So know that as a sort of, you know, most of you guys watching this are first world citizens. You belong to a great country. You have great, uh, you know, um, support systems that can help you. You'll never really be homeless, you know? And so you are in the better position really to take better risks than a lot of uh, people in the rest of the year uh, in the world that can't have access to those sorts of resources. OK, so the first thing, um, you know, to think about when you're working with your inner critic uh, is this first piece. I'm going to put up there in the text here. Acknowledge the fear exists. So this is the first step that you do is not pretend that it doesn't exist. And when you pretend, what then happens is panic. And anxiety sets in because that inner critic shouts even louder when it's not being heard, when it's not being acknowledged. So you want to imagine like your inner critic, almost like a, if you're a stand up comedian, it's a heckler uh, or it could be like that naggy mother sort of thing, you know, that won't stop nagging, won't stop pestering you in the ear until they're acknowledged. You know, and that's usually how humans work, right? Sometimes when they care for you, your mother cares for you, they sort of go, oh my God, you should worry about this and worry about that. And they're not going to stop unless you sort of go and you sit down and go, hey, thank you for caring for me and thank you for worrying for me, but let's talk about it, you know? So it's the same sort of conversation and atmosphere that you want to be creating for your inner critic. Now, acknowledging your fears and acknowledging that the inner critic and the fears do exist and they're real doesn't actually mean that you are agreeing with it. But you are simply saying, I hear you and let's talk about it, right? That is the first step, acknowledging the fear. Don't try to push it under the rug because it's going to come back sort of 10 times louder if you do that, okay? The second thing uh, that you should, the second step that you should be looking at with your um, inner critic is to start negotiating with your inner critic. And here's the thing of where we usually stop at and not continue that conversation because most of us don't know that we can negotiate with our inner critics, that actually they are not the boss of us and that uh, we can actually have a harmonious conversation if we wanted to. You know, just like the people in our lives, you know, we have conflict with family, we have conflict with friends, we have conflict with colleagues. That doesn't mean, oh, well, if we have conflict, we just have to get through it. And, and that's the way it is. We don't accept that in real life, right? We try to negotiate, we try to sort of reach a, a, a mutual agreement that would fit both parties. And the same thing goes with your inner critic. You almost need to per personify it in order to um, have this conversation with it, right? So negotiating with your inner critic really allows you to acknowledge that the fear exists and the critic exists, but it opens up this opportunity for discussion, right? You wanna treat it like a friend. Well, you know, if you have a best friend who just started yelling at you or telling you that you're not good enough, I mean, you wouldn't just stand there and take it, would you? You wouldn't. You would sort of go, well, what's going on? Why are you saying those things? What's backing up, you know, the fact that you're saying, you know, things that, that are negative like that? Like, show me some evidence that you think I'm not good enough. You know, really, truly, in this negotiation stage, find out what's truly behind the fear. 
So they might be saying, well, you've never done this before. You've never started a business. You've never quit your job before. You've always done this trajectory uh, in your version of success. How do you know anything different? <coughs> well, you want to question that. You don't want to go, well, I've done a lot of things that I haven't done before, and that's what led me to my current version of my success. So that can't be factual. You know, There's always things that I've never done before, but it never means that I can't do them. So you have to have this real conversation with them. Um, or you might be saying, well, the last time you did this, the last time you tried to start a business, the last time you tried to freelance, you failed. You didn't get clients, You know, so you can't do it all over again. Um, so you want to really find out what's behind that fear. So ask, well, why do you think that? So what are some of the reasons? of why you think I'm not good enough for this and really almost be like a journalist, you know, not take it emotionally of what that inner critic will respond to, but actually just be writing down notes, you know, of like, okay, I failed last time because I didn't bring in clients. Okay, good point. And just sort of be very neutral about it as you ask the questions to your inner critic. Um, I usually like doing it sometimes on a work document where I have like a weird dialogue where it's like Lydia says this, my inner critic says that. And it sort of lets me sort of journal that uh, conversation between the two parts of me in order to see what's actually really coming out. Out and be able to see it from more of a neutral point of view when I read that over again. But you want to use this negotiation tactic as an opportunity to know what practical things that you do need to do to bring relief to that fear, right? There's a lot of insight actually in our fear that if we utilize it appropriately, it can really help us to get out of that fear-based mentality. Uh, it can be very useful to use those insights for what it is that we have to do and get clear on on our next step. So the inner critic isn't completely wrong about what you have to find out. It might give you a lot of negative points about why you shouldn't do the thing that you do, but it has answers to what you need to find out, what you need to get help with, what you need to get clear on in order to make that fear a little bit less noisy and sticky for you. Okay. Negotiate with your inner critic. Just try to find out information about what do you think you need to do in order to get the inner critic to feel a little bit better about the changes that you're making in your life. Now, the third thing is um, you need to gain a neutral perspective about uh, all the sort of negativity that can be coming uh, from your inner critic. So when you're emotionally attached to the circumstance, it can be really hard to be logical and really calm. You know, we've all experienced times where we just sort of lose control of our emotions because we're so scared, we're so afraid, we're so in anxiety mode that it can't, it's not a good place, you know, to start thinking about the next steps because you're not, um, you know, no creativity and, and good ideas come from that place of anxiety and panic. So you want to walk away from it for a little bit. You know, go take a walk. When you feel those moments, just sort of acknowledge and go, okay, it's coming up and here's the things that I want to talk about, but we don't have to respond to it right away. Okay. We can take a bit of a break about it. We can sort of, um, uh, uh, take a, take a neutral perspective about it to start and then go back into it when we feel a little bit calmer about our circumstance. Um, because it is really hard, right? To be logical and calm during uh, a panic and anxiety mode and you can't really make conscious decisions about your life at this point. So really try to look at your circumstance from a neutral point of view by um, looking at your circumstance as if it's happening to someone else. Right. So if someone else came to you with the same problems, with the same sort of fears around uh, career transitions or lifestyle changes, think about how you would help this person. So really remove yourself from your own body and look at it from a bird's eye point of view of like, what would I actually say uh, to this person uh, in order to make them feel better? What would you say to them to really get the real facts around their fears? What are the logical solutions that you could come up with that would make this person feel better? Uh, what blind spots could this person be having? because they're having this fear and what are the doable steps that I need to do to be able to ease that fear, right? So when you take this neutral perspective, you're able to see things more clearly and logically rather than being emotionally involved into the problem where, you know, as I said, none of those creative solutions can come from there, right? So a lot of times when I look at my fear, so a good example of this was last year when I uh, did a lot of public speaking on stages of like 100 people and up, up to 350 people. I mean, I was really scared shitless. I've never done public speaking in that sort of large numbers before. Uh, but part of me goes, well, if I wasn't scared of it, I really would want to do it. So that really prompted me to go, well, I need to get over the fear because actually the end of that, you know, rainbow, I would really want to be a part of that experience. Um, and so I had to really check in with myself. Well, how could could I allow my inner critic to give me that permission to be on stage, right? How could I be more brave to be on stage? What does it need from me to allow me to do that? So when I talked 
to my my inner critic about that is said things like, well, you've never been on, been on stage before. You don't know how to craft a keynote. Well, you need help with that, you know? And so I go, okay, great. I need to hire someone that can help me with that. I need to practice my speaking. I need to do more videos to start to get myself in the habit of speaking and then getting on, on a stage and practice makes perfect, right? Like I can do make make more hours in my day to practice my speeches before I get on stage. And that's going to help, again, ease the fear. So it doesn't mean that I'm not allowed to do it. It just means that I have to set up some steps and set up some support system and find out the resources that I need in order to ease that fear down. Because again, remember, as what I said in the beginning of this uh, live stream, is that action is the antidote for fear. Any small incremental actions that you can prepare on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis to tackle that fear without sort of jumping and hoping the parachute will open, just a small little step will really help you ease your way into confidence rather than uh, jumping full flight and getting sort of a shock of your life, which we don't want to do because that, that kind of traumatizes us from even pursuing uh, those big goals that we want to have. Okay, Antid uh, Action is the antidote uh, for fear. So... Um, I would love to know sort of what is uh, your inner critic telling you? So first of all, what is your goals that you want for your life? What do you want, but you're secretly sort of afraid to go after? Uh, and what are what is your inner critic saying to you that you feel is preventing you from making that next move? Um, and I want you to try those two things that I talked about, right? I'm going to put them on the screen again so that you are reminded on that. Uh, the first thing is acknowledging the fear exists, right? Give yourself a, not a hard time by experiencing this fear. Don't say, oh my God, hello, can you get braver? don't do that to yourself you know be calm and collected and sort of treat yourself like a child you know you wouldn't yell at a child for having fears you sort of go oh honey it's okay you know you want to do that sort of same thing we're just we're just sort of big big children or sorry little children and big people clothes that's really who we are as adults so we have to remember that we're not really adults we're really children emotionally uh, but and we have to treat ourselves that way and, and be compassionate and empathetic during times of change, right? By acknowledging these fears exist, calm ourselves down and goes, I know, I know we're thinking that, but I want to know how, you, why you feel that way, right? Be really calm about um, this first part of acknowledging your fear and not trying to shove things under the rug or pretend that your inner critic doesn't exist. The second thing is negotiate with your inner critic. Number two, right? Um, after you find out and you acknowledge what the fear is, what, why they're fearful about that, try that negotiation tactic, as I mentioned, of going, well, what could I actually really be doing? What would you like me to do uh, in order for you to feel safer about me pursuing this goal or feel safer about me um, going towards uh, this dream that I have, you know, and plan out small actionable steps. Sometimes it's just calling a friend, telling them about it. Sometimes it's reaching out to a blogger that you admire and asking a question. Sometimes about joining a Facebook group and uh, being able to be around people that can give you those answers for starting a business. There's always a next step, always a next step. And it doesn't have to be a huge step to start with, but it is a incremental step that leads you to an, uh, a courageous move into your life, right? Um, and lastly, action is the antidote to fear. So always keep that in mind of that. You can't think your way out of fear. You have to uh, make action and create action in order to create new evidence into your life by experiencing that the fear is actually um, not as bad as you thought. And you can make little moves to ease down that fear. OK, and I would love to hear from you if you have any questions about speaking to your inner critic or dealing with the fears that you have in your life. Uh, please comment below the video and I'll come back here after the broadcast is done uh, to answer your question and help you move forward with what I could advise on of what you need to be thinking about or getting support on in order to not let that fear control what you want to do with your lives. OK. And lastly, as promised, uh, it, uh, as I mentioned about the, the Bali retreat, I know a lot of you guys have sort of uh, messaged me privately around this. Um, again, the, the, the link to get to um, coming to the Bali retreat, this is a place, you know, th this is really for someone that is in the midst of a career transition. And one of the big ideas, uh, sorry, and if one of the big ideas you have for your life is to start your own independent career or business, and you don't want to do it alone, you want to be around like-minded people to do it, and you want my help to guide you on the practical steps to do it while you're still high, you know, in a full-time job, how to create that side hustle for your life right now and move that into a full-time career. 
um, we are having this awesome retreat that's coming up in Bali for you to do just that. And you'll see some of some, some awesome testimonials of the 10 participants that joined me in the last retreat in April and be able to see what came up for them. What did they get started on? What ideas came up from the retreat that really allowed them to feel courageous and confident after going home after the retreat and knowing that clear plan of how to implement uh, that new idea, which is obviously your next big thing uh, after coming from Bali. And of course, Bali is always a great holiday spot. Uh, um, you know, a lot of people come to do a, a part holiday, a part learning experience that always gives great value to other people. So make sure to check out the retreat on the retreat page link right there. Uh, and you can talk, see all about our videos that happened in the last retreat and all the testimonials to see if that retreat is the right thing for you. So the retreat is happening from November 12th to the 18th, and we are running this as our last retreat this year. Um, and uh, what we work on in the retreat is we help you define your business idea. We help you create your offer, something to sell, like, you know, be proud of something to sell and know what to charge for it and know what is the service or the product that you're creating uh, for the right people. And we're going to be teaching you all about launching this business in the right way that helps you to be less overwhelmed about doing all the things and really get um, uh, good with planning out what you actually have to achieve in the little milestones in your business idea in order to reach uh, the bigger milestone of launching a successful business. There's actually a lot of things uh, that you, that we have to get clear on before we actually do things like marketing and branding and all the things you have think you have to do for your business, but actually the foundational work of your business in terms of like who you want to serve, what is your bigger mission, what's the bigger message behind your work, and why you're the person to solve that problem uh, needs you to get clear on that before you actually start marketing it to other people. We answer all those questions and more at the retreat. Okay, so I hope that if you guys are interested to learn more about that, uh, please go into the link I just show on the screen. I just showed on the screen in order to book a call with me. It's a free call. We talk about what you need. We talk about whether or not the retreat is a good idea for you, uh, and we have a little bit of a jam session. I'll give you advice during that call, uh, even if it's even if the retreat isn't for you. I'll always give you a next step of what you should be doing at the stage you're in in your life. Okay. Thank you so very much for joining me. And uh, I always love these live streams. I do them about once or twice a week. So uh, one of the things that I love getting from you guys are topics that we uh, that you would like to learn. And this is one of the topics that came to me from an email from someone on my email list. Uh, so thank you uh, to Josh, who actually submitted this question for me about dealing with inner critics. So if you have a topic uh, that you would like me to stream on, talk about, uh, break down for you, please comment under the video below um, and let me know. And I'll make sure to reserve that topic into a future live stream and make sure to credit you for that uh, because of your big idea for me. Okay. Thank you so very much guys for joining me. And again, I'm going to watch that comments box uh, after this broadcast has ended. I would love to help you through working out your fears, knowing what to do about your fears. So please enroll me into that conversation and I'll be sure to help you along the way. Okay. Thanks again for joining me and I'll see you next week for our next live stream. Bye.